and Juventus want to sack Paul Pogba. I mean, is this guy even a footballer anymore? He seems to be just a highly paid cheerleader. Just someone who dances on TikTok. Some influencer with millions of fans, sure. But I mean, Juventus could have just paid that money for KSI. This was supposed to be his dream Juve return, right? When leaving Manchester United on a free for less than the price of an egg sausage roll, he literally had his pick of clubs. Yeah, I'm guessing right now, he probably feels like biting off a chunk of the wall because Juventus was literally the worst possible choice. Because don't forget, this transfer has cost him everything. The guy essentially broke his knee in pre-season training in July. Okay, it happens. But club doctors told him to go get surgery and he refused? I'm sorry, the guy earns £130,000 a week. Your employers are literally advising you to go under the knife and you said no because he thought he'd have a better chance of playing at the World Cup if he didn't have an operated knee. As he's so much squabbling over operations, this sounds like the life problems of Michael Jackson. Not only was this guy not fit for the World Cup, but I mean, he's still not fit enough to make his second Juventus debut. And we're literally in February. And knowing Pogba's ego, you just know that man thinks that if he were fit to play guitar, oh, then surely is world-class ability would have made the difference and France would have won another World Cup. Yeah, that's the thing about Paul. He's about as deluded as Pamela Anderson. Yeah, don't watch her documentary. It's about as entertaining as watching your grandma floss her teeth, but it gets worse. Right now, apparently, Juventus are contemplating terminating this man's contract. Lads, I think the pub back hashtag is probably the most terrifying thing in world sports. This is the second time Pogba has returned to a club, only to completely ruin his reputation with the fans. Ozzy, they say sequels are usually bad. I'm mean, sure that return to Old Trafford was pretty weak, but I mean, it had its moments, so it was probably like The Hangover 2. But this Juventus sequel, oh, this is straight up Evan Almighty. A movie so desperately unfunny, within 20 minutes, I was half tempted to just tear out my own eyes with a spoon. But it gets worse. Pogba quit Manchester United to go play Champions League football, right? Yeah. Going to Juventus, somehow, this once great European powerhouse took three points from their Champions League group, even losing a game in Israel, and now have a Europa League tie with Nantes. Christ above, imagine supporting a football team called Nantes. Is Prince Andrew's face part of the flag? He'll probably not even be fit enough for the tie. So again, the injured Pogba cheerleader is just gonna be watching from the sidelines as the Juventus in field get torn apart by a nearly four-year-old Moussa Sissoko. Lat, Juventus are a joke. Growing up in Ireland, I remember one snobbish, brattish, rich boy. You know, the type of elite of snob who thinks their own sweat smells like Chanel perfume. He, despite hailing from the back muddy areas of County Limerick, this fella chose to support Juventus. The ultimate hipster. Yeah. Where are you now, Ryan? The son of a famous doctor? Who used to tell me that my hair smelled of weed? Are you enjoying this now, Ryan? Your club currently sits 13th in Serie A after being docked 15 points for a scandal. Hmm. Imagine my surprise. Back when I was a child, this exact same club were relegated for paying off referees. I mean, does this club never learn? The day they chose to appoint Andrea Agnelli as Juventus chairman in May 2010, sure, he made some good decisions. Restored the club to greatness. I mean, for a while there, the Italian league looked about as competitive as any current Floyd Mayweather fight. What? Fighting Deji and some bloke off Geordie Shore? Aunty Floyd, if you know shame. And so Agnelli was probably held up as some white knight hero. No, no, in reality, he's a super villain. Just the Joker with a beard. The guy who tried to erode the sport by creating the Super League. And now he's been suspended for two years due to mishandling and manipulating transfer finances. What? A. Mess. Pogba is officially employed by a club. We're now just 10 points above the relegation zone. I know, I know they recently went on an eight game winning run. Max Allegri looked like he saved his job and reputation. I mean lads, in that eight game run, they didn't even concede a single goal. White Czech Chesney suddenly looked like the Polish Nick Pope. I mean, Gianluigi Buffon would have been proud of that obsessive run of clean sheets. It looked like Juventus were back and then they got smashed 5-1 by Napoli. They then had a crazy 3-3 home draw with Atalanta where Adam Ola Lukman, you know, formerly of Charlton, Everton, and Fulham? Yeah, he tore their defence apart as it was made of wet tofu. And most recently, they were just beaten up 2-0 at home to newly promoted Monza. Aren't they uh, just an online bank? I mean, no, la last season, that team finished fourth in Serie B, having just sold Mario Balotelli. How do you go from eight clean sheets in a row to suddenly collapsing like a treehouse made of lasagna, conceding 10 in three games? And there's more chaos and mess. There is an FIGC prosecutor, Giuseppe Cine, who is aiming to prove that Juventus paid salary under the table during the height of lockdown. And Il Carriere del Sport is reporting that he's going to request a new 20 point deduction. Juventus are already appealing the 15 point penalty, which is a risk because if they lose at a second trial, they'll get pushed even further down the league. Lads, right now, Paul Pogba should be the least of 
Juventus' worries. Because they could legitimately be relegated to Serie B again. Massimiliano Allegri admits Juventus' relegation fear. So think Allegri actually turned down the vacant job at Real Madrid to instead return to this mess two years ago? Does anyone think that when he saw Carlo Ancelotti, you know, the guy who had recently been the Everton boss, lifting aloft the Champions League trophy in May, does anyone think that a jealous Allegri must have smashed up his TV? Now, imagine if Cristiano Ronaldo was still at this club and still pocketing his half a million pounds a week for a European joke literally being chewed apart by lawyers. I thought it was borderline insane to hear that Juventus were paying Aaron Ramsey nearly 400,000 pounds a week for a Welch cheese muffin? Lad, this week I saw a transfer report that Aaron Ramsey had joined Middlesbrough and I didn't bat an eyelid. Yeah, sounds about right. The Welshman is absolutely washed up. He's parked his best and just a sour crumpet of a midfielder. So I moved to the championship. Yeah, I believe that. Turns out that no, it was the other one. Jacob Ramsey's brother. But still, it was these sort of monster wage signings on free transfers that have killed the fabrics of this club. You found this? We're the biggest myth. I mean, they won the race over every top club in Europe to buy Matthijs Delit from Ajax in 2019. I mean, they gave him a huge monster wage and a five-year contract. This guy was going to be the backbone of the club for the next 10 years. Yeah, did anybody think that he'd just be giving up and quitting within three? No, this guy's not the next Fabio Cannavaro for the old lady. No, he's now a highly paid superstar centre back for Bayern Munich. I mean, Ronaldo himself was supposed to wind down his career at Juventus, but their financial disaster, and he was forced to leave out of just three years to just go and become mates with Luke Shaw. Juventus recover from the Calcio Poli match fixing scandal. They recover from that to win a bunch of league titles in a row. Imagine coming back from the depths of hell, and yet still, all these years later, another scandal threatening to kill the club. This club are an absolute nightmare right now, and Pogba. He's on the verge of the sack. And imagine if he does. Imagine if he has to leave Juventus without playing a single match. Who is going to take him then? I mean, when it comes to Europe, I guarantee you, he won't be able to get a better offer than teams from, I don't know, Turkey? Honestly, Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, maybe teams like Marseille or Monaco in France. Well, considering Pogba's obsession with American culture, I honestly believe this man is going to be the MLS by the end of the year. I mean, is this it? Is this really where Pogba's career ends? Flying off to America at just 30 years old? I remember back in 2010, when there was all this hype about the Man United wonder kid, Paul Pogba. I remember talking to someone back then and admitting I didn't know who he was. And this diehard Manchester United fan looked me in the eye and said, He's going to one day win the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. I'm still waiting, Rob. Honestly, this return to Juventus might just be the most horrible sequel in the history of football. If only, if only Pogba had just listened to Jose Mourinho when he tried to save your career. I mean, Danny Ali didn't take any notice of that Jose Pep talk. And look at him now. I watched the beanbag at 26 playing in the Turkish league. Pogba was the man openly gloating on the internet when Mourinho got the Manchester United sack. Yeah, guess what, Paul? That horrible boogeyman Mourinho is, um, 14 points ahead of you in the league table? Okay, I know, without the points deduction, you'd actually be a point above Roma in the table, but it doesn't matter. Okay, because Pogba, you've contributed as much to this Juventus season as a brain damaged butterfly. Even if Juventus don't go down next season, what are they gonna be like next year without European football of any sort? Honestly, that we cannot have that. We cannot have Brighton and Hove Albion in Europe next season while Juventus are not. Honestly, that just will not compute in my brain. It was bad enough trying to get my head around the fact that Juventus was in Serie B back in 2007. I'm sorry, but it looked deathly weird to see footballing greats like Gianluigi Buffon, Alessandro Del Piero, Pavel Nedved, and um, Jean Olong Song playing in the same division as Arezzo, Frosinone, and Albino Lefe. Honestly, they just sound like bad pizza toppings. Although, while we're talking about that weird Serie B season, can we just talk about the fact that, um, the top two in the Italian second tier in 2007 were Juventus and Napoli. Honestly, that, I'm gonna say the same thing as if I saw Judy Dench working out down my local gym. What are you doing here? Lads, Napoli weren't even in that division due to the match fixing scandal. No, no, that year, in 06 07, they were a newly promoted club from Serie C, and it had been seven years since they were in Serie A, and now they're gonna be the champions of Italy. So, Napoli are the miracle story. They have rebuilt their reputation, and, and they're now a roaring success. The club is the healthiest it's ever been. But Juventus, 
They're back in scandal. It's just embarrassing. Juventus will not be in Europe next year. So what are they going to do with their monster wages? I know they've got the wage bill down somewhat, but I mean, lads, even Leonardo Benucci, a veteran centre half, who turns 36 in May, someone who already betrayed the club for a quick fling at AC Milan five years ago, you're still paying him over £200,000 a week? Yeah. He's an old man with the loyalty of a pig. Dusan Vlavic is on nearly £250,000 a week. Yeah, he's a centre forward with six goals this season. Six. And this is a guy who scoffed at a move to Arsenal last year. Pretty sure he's currently crying in the toilet. But Ozzy, Juventus are a mess. And Pogba's career is absolutely in the mud. Anyway, that's what you, let me know in the comments. What do you think about this whole Juventus scandal? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to get like, subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.